When Cummins Engine Company needed a technologically advanced cooling system for their new Class A truck, the Wild Thing, they called on Electric Fan Engineering, who designed and manufactured a cooling system that easily withstood the rigors of a 1,000-mile race through the desert. We are proud to be part of this world-class effort and are ready to meet the challenges of all of your projects. There are places on this earth that seem as if they were created to challenge the tenacity, the resourcefulness, and the will to succeed of those who are willing to come here and take the test. The Baja Peninsula is such a place. And as such, it is the site of the annual Baja 1000, a race like no other in the world. Run on a course that stretches across barren desert, climbs mountainous terrain, then sweeps across broiling dry wash lakes. Boulders, sagebrush, and sand are the pavement on this track. And into this harsh environment, came a vehicle the like of which the world had never seen before. A Class 8 truck called Wild Thing. Tough enough to take on what no Class 8 truck had dared before. A truck tough enough to run the Baja. The story of Wild Thing is the story of two companies that have a history of continually pushing the limits of performance, reliability, and durability. Navistar and Cummins. Together, they have brought innovative business solutions to customers for years, with trucks that combine state-of-the-art design with cost-effective durability and deliver outstanding performance for greater productivity. For Navistar and Cummins, the ability to stay ahead of the game, to continue bringing innovative solutions to customers, means taking on challenges that no other manufacturers are willing to test. Challenges like the Baja 1000. Wild Thing was constructed around an International 9200, a truck with an innovative design for profit-making productivity in a wide range of uses. Wild Thing suspension was custom built by a racing shop in California to withstand the harsh pounding of the Baja. And Wild Thing's power came from a Cummins M11 engine. It was a stock M11 engine producing 370 horsepower at 1,350 pound-feet, an engine straight off the production floor with no modifications or enhancements. The same engine that powers many International 9200s in a wide range of truckload, less than truckload, private carrier, and bulk transport applications. But this M11 was designed to power a 9200 into an application like no other in the world, a Class 8 off-road racing truck. Upon its arrival in Mexico, the truck was the center of attention, attracting crowds wherever it went. Giant race truck. <laughs> really done a good job with it. Yes, we ran the truck last week, and uh, very impressive. The uh, the diesel puts out tremendous amount of torque, and uh, unlike gasoline vehicles, which I've driven a lot of, uh, not had a lot of experience with a diesel. And uh, when you first get in that and put your foot in it, it's amazing the kind of torque that that thing puts out and the way it it propels you forward. But the Navistar Cummins team came to the Baja to do more than just attract attention. They came to run the course. Yet as a new class of truck, far different from the dune buggies, trophy trucks, and Hummers that dominate the entry list, Wild Thing was required to start last in the field. A requirement that caused more than one competitive team to run the course with its eyes cast furtively toward the rear view mirror because not only was Wild Thing the biggest truck on the course, it was also among the fastest. We reached 100 most of the time and average 40, average 40 miles an hour. So it was, the 100 mile an hour parts were fun. We passed most of the, the smaller buggies and, and that and uh, got around most of the Hummers and, and things with no problem. They, they move right over for us. 
As Wild Thing moved its way through the field, it passed over 60 other entrants in the first two hours. Yet keeping track of its progress was no problem because Wild Thing was equipped with advanced road relay engine monitoring and communications technology from Cummins Electronics. Vital engine parameters, as well as the vehicle's exact position on the course, were relayed to the crew via a satellite uplink to the support crew. And all the vital engine information was also readily displayed for the driving team. As the race continued, pounding through its more than 20-hour run across 620 grueling miles, vehicles began to drop out. In fact, under the best of circumstances, less than half of the vehicles starting the race actually finish. And in this year's Baja 1000, the difficulty was compounded by something that few racing veterans had ever seen before. Rain and mud. Well, it goes real well over the bumps and uh, plenty of torque. Goes right up the sand washes. We had uh, a little bit of fun on the dry lake at about 100 miles an hour sideways in the mud, but uh, finally got it straightened out, and uh, it's real exciting out there in the rain. Yeah, we trimmed some bushes along the way here. Uh, we had a whole forest inside the cab for a while. We had to stop and unload that. <laughs> After enduring the pounding terrain and churning through the seas of mud, Wild Thing suffered the fate of most of the vehicles in this year's race, a repair that took valuable time. For Wild Thing, it was part of the custom-built suspension. And by the time repairs were complete and Wild Thing was again up and running, not enough time was left to complete the course. Yet when all is said and done, one simple fact remains, that Navistar and Cummins are two companies that are willing to face the toughest challenge and take it on to do what no one else has dared to do with a truck that did what no other Class 8 truck has ever done. Run the Baja in a vehicle that is tough, competitive, and capable. This year, time ran out, but the Baja hasn't heard the last from Navistar and Cummins. If there's more that can be learned about performance, toughness, and durability, then Navistar and Cummins will be back. And so will Wild Thing.